Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today is a very different type of video because it's going to be a sit down, get to know us and Tucker. And Tucker, the most important part, yes. the special guest, not me this time, but Tucker. Tucker is the best. So the last video you saw on my channel was actually us going to pick him up all the way from Gdansk. So if you haven't seen that video, I will go ahead and link it somewhere up here so you guys can take a look and get watch actually him in the car on the way home to Krakow. So now we've actually had him for about a week and a half. And been the best week ever. We we're obsessed with him. So I thought it'd be really fun to sit down with you guys, introduce you to Tucker, and tell you kind of the backstory of why we got him, where we got him, and all of that good stuff. So stick around, make sure you subscribe and like this video so you can see more of Tucker as he grows into a big, strong, handsome boy. Uh, his Instagram will also be in the description box below. So make sure you go follow him and let's go ahead and get started. So as you may have noticed, he has switched sides because he is a wiggly little boy and he likes to sleep, but he also likes to wiggle around a lot. I mean, just look. He's pushing stuff. So Andy, okay. why did we get a pug puppy? It was a long, long story, but basically long story short, I've wanted a pug for like 10 years. And as I said in the previous video, one of my friends here was cutting my hair and he was like, Andreas, it's about time you just get a pug. And I was like, okay. And then we ended up getting one. So that's the long story short. But pugs, um, if you don't know, they're literally the perfect animal. They're my spirit animal and everything about them is perfection. So if you get an opportunity, you should get one because I mean, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Yeah, he currently weighs five and a half pounds, and the breeder said that he would grow to be about 15 to 16 pounds. So he's not going to be that big of a dog, which I actually would prefer. I don't really like the really big types of dogs, so it's nice that he is a little bit smaller, and he likes he, he sleeps all the time. Uh, he is quite playful whenever he is up, but then he just goes right back to sleep, and you can pretty much do anything with him. He is... To be honest, he's one of the sweetest puppies I have ever been around. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've had dogs growing up and so has Andy. But, I mean, I could be biased because he's ours, but he really feels like he has, like, the best temperament. Yeah, he's super chill and uh, he sleeps a lot, as we said. And he just, he doesn't get riled up very easily. He doesn't get super excited. I mean, when we go on walks and stuff and play, obviously, he's a puppy. But most of the time, he's just chill. He never barks, except when it's lunchtime and I'm giving him food. But we're trying to train him out of that. But everything, you know, he's really good with, we've had guests over and he just loves people. And he does tail bumps and rolls over and they pet his belly. And then he'll fall asleep on their lap and everything. So his temperament is just really, really, really good. Yeah, he is the sweetest little boy, but he is very needy. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But He also farts all the time, <laughs> which is... Kind of funny, but pugs are very gassy, so sorry if that's TMI. But now that you kind of know a little bit about Tucker, here's kind of like the backstory of why we really wanted to get him. Um, and I know Andy briefly touched on this when his friend was cutting his hair, but um, the, ever since we moved to Europe three years ago, we've just kind of had our eyes open for pugs and just kind of looking around to see what's out there. And to be honest, uh, we've seen quite a few of them, but we've just never pulled the trigger. And the main reason we haven't is because they are so darn expensive. Like anyone that we had seen doing breeding, like pug breeding in the UK or other places in Europe, they were like over 2000 euros, which is insanity. I would never spend that for a dog. I no, like, he's so cute, but I would never, I, for me personally, I would just never do that. And so we held off for years and years because they were so expensive. And we knew ones who moved to Europe, you know, we want to settle and, you know, like really build our life. We've been here for three years. Um, and we're like, you know, now is a great time. If we see something, let's, you know, really consider it. And uh, probably middle of April, we were sitting around with our uh, really good friends and essentially Sebastian just talked Andy into getting a pug puppy so Andy just got online and started looking and he actually found a breeder in Gdansk uh, like on a Craigslist type of site here in Poland and um, the pug puppies were posted like two days before Andy actually saw the ads so and he emailed them. But we just like, no, we love the classic look of the pug and we saw the other puppies and they were very cute and adorable and I'm sure oh. they went to great homes. And the breeder was really good too. That was yeah, another really good thing. the breeder was thing. really good. And, but we were just like, you know what, if we're going to get a pug, we've waited this long and Sarah said we're just going to get the classic fawn look because I think they're just so darn cute and adorable. 
And yeah, we drove up and got uh, Buttercup was his name when we got him, but we yeah, obviously we thought Tucker was a bit better than Buttercup. But so leading up to actually getting him, uh, we reserved him like literally a few days after we got the notification that he was available. So that was like end ish of April. And we just started ordering everything. And this was during when quarantine was happening. So everything was shut down. We're like, oh my gosh, we're getting a dog. We have nothing. Uh, so we just ordered everything on Amazon. So we spent uh, like the, like three or four weeks to just kind of compiling all of his stuff. And I'll actually leave the things we got for him down below because I, guys, I was so impressed with all of the things that we got for him. You know, he got a kennel, he got a dog bed, he got an incredible assortment of toys and uh, just so many things that just kept coming in from Amazon. And I was just overwhelmed with the high amount of like quality and how affordable everything was. And I was just really happy with all of that. So that's kind of um, all of that. And then once we uh, figured out the date to go pick him up, then you, obviously you guys probably have seen this video, but we just drove up, picked him up and came back home. And we have been here ever since. Mm -hmm, exactly. So what have we learned from having a pug puppy? Well, like all puppies, they're a lot of work. They're a lot of work. Yes, we've <clears throat> probably been averaging five to six hours a night of sleep, which is actually pretty good. The first yes. few nights we were averaging about two, to yeah. be perfectly honest. And I know, and I've <clears throat> always known that pugs are very needy and clingy animals just by their personality. But Tucker has like legit separation anxiety. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like, it's cute right now, yeah. It's, but later on, it's not. Yeah, be it's kind of cute, but it's also kind of not. Because like, if Sarah and I are in the office, and then Sarah leaves, he'll start whining and go to the door and howl. And then at night, if we put him in um, like the bathroom or something like that, so we can do dinner or something, so he doesn't bother the cat or anything, he just howls and howls. And obviously, as you can see now, oh, he's so cute when he's cuddly. Don't so let cute. it fool you. Yeah, don't basically, let that fool you. Like if we put him down right now, he can start out howling. Mm -hmm. And I mean, as Sarah said, it's kind of cute, but it's also kind of really annoying at the same time because then you got to think of okay, well, what are we gonna do with the dog? Because then he's gonna howl. Will he bother the neighbors? Will he get really upset? Yeah. You know, pugs are very empathetic creatures and they're very emotional, and so it's kind of ridiculous to think that uh, every action we take basically has to be like, how will it affect the emotions of the pug? <laughs> And as you, you know, he is incredibly sweet, but um, it's just really hard to be like, okay, well, we need to, um, you know, be, be so attentive to him all the time. And I know that puppies take a lot of work and I totally get that because I had a puppy, you know, in college, but uh, working full time, working at home, it's, it's a lot because you're just constantly dealing with dogs running around then we also have a cat okay and our cat is not adjusting as well to tucker and not as fast as i would have liked she's doing it better she's yeah. getting better every day but it's like they can't be alone together and it's you just always have to be aware of where he is because he's not fully potty trained yet he has learned that he might start chasing the cat he might chew on her scratching post he might uh, crawl into the curtains it's just so many things that you're just like Ugh! and i can't even imagine how you would feel with a kid because <laughs> we don't have kids and to me it's just like so much work to have a puppy but uh i'm not it sounds like i'm complaining i'm really not i'm like it's just the reality of having a puppy but honestly it totally makes up for it he went on a walk yesterday mm -hmm. all over the green space we were out for about an hour and he did probably 30 to 40 minutes of it he is 11 weeks old tomorrow so he is growing Quite a bit as you can see and that kind of breaks my heart um but he did really good and so we're trying really hard to be um not babying him like carrying him downstairs or uh, just making sure he's walking everywhere and so he can really just start to build up the leash training um, he's doing good with the potty area yeah i would say he's probably about 60 percent potty trained right now because he's still young so it's kind of like impulsive where he'll just be like oh no and then he has to go potty but yeah. we got potty pads from amazon and he'll go on the potty pads and stuff and we try to take him down you know every two hours but the last two nights he has slept through the night and not had any accidents which is really yes, good it's been fantastic and then kind of like the last thing i wanted to really touch on was um like what we're doing with his diet because if you have a puppy or even a dog 
Uh, I just cannot recommend this enough. So for people who actually don't know me personally, I have a degree in nutritional dietetics. I am very much into health and fitness. I do this with my job uh, online. So uh, when we got Tucker, I knew that uh, his nutrition was going to be the most important thing because dogs like this are very prone to obesity. And that's one thing I just refuse to do. I do not want my dog to be obese. I want him to be very active and healthy. And I don't wanna to have to give him medications based on something that I could actually have prevented with his diet. So I did my research and I figured out what is the best food for Tucker and I will show you. Okay, you probably can see his face. I literally just pulled this out and his, he was dead asleep in his eyes. So I was like, oh man. He's like, oh. Okay, so this, it looks really nasty. Um, but this is like a, like a mix, like a stew mixture. So it has ground beef, pumpkin, carrots, peas, um, brown rice and beef broth. And I just stuck it in the crock pot for like five hours, had it really kind of thicken up. Um, add, you don't add any kind of seasoning, but the good thing about this is dogs are more omnivore creatures. So they don't need a strictly, um, uh, meat diet. So, um, with dogs like Tucker, like pugs, really, um, pumpkin is really good for them. They have a chicken allergy. So you have to be really careful with the types of meat you give them. So we've just chosen ground beef. Uh, they need some sort of uh, starch in their diet. So we've done brown rice because it is, uh, it's a pretty complete grain. I'm actually going to try quinoa because it's also a plant-based protein source. So might be another way to get some more protein into his diet. Um, but yeah, he really loves it. And he is his digestion is doing really well so honestly if you have a, a puppy or even a dog you know it doesn't matter how old just try it uh to be honest you were skeptical yeah a little bit just because it's like oh you have to buy dog food and special formula and all that stuff but then i was thinking you know what i mean obviously he has puppy food like fortified yeah. really expensive we're not we're specific. not doing the raw food diet yeah, don't no, get this confused no. so he has specific pug puppy formulated diet hard food um, and then he gets the wet food too but figure you know it's better to get some hard food that has all the really essential vitamins and minerals and it's a complete source and it's good for his teeth and stuff mm -hmm. but then what better way to make sure he gets really high quality proteins and everything than to just make it himself and you know it's basically just a beef stew so if i want a little schnacko every now and then i just have you know a little spoonful of his stuff it tastes pretty good i'm not gonna lie could use some salt though yeah but we're really careful with the seasoning so you know, as in we don't put any seasoning, no seasoning, no. not nothing. It's very plain, um, but he loves it. He gets very excited when we feed him and um, his whole demeanor has changed since we got him because of the puppy, like the breeder, they gave us some food and it wasn't high quality. It was essentially like if you ate donuts every day for eight weeks, you would just feel very bloated and gassy. And that's how exactly how he was. So then we switched him over to the hard food that we got him. That's like completely uh, corn free, all that kind of stuff. And then the food that I just showed you and his bloating went down instantly, his bowels tightened up, everything just started working really well. And so I'm, I'm just really happy that we made this switch because uh, nutrition is so important for us as humans. And why wouldn't I not treat my dog the same way? So that's what we're doing with him. Um, of course, you know, every he's just growing so fast and doing so much. And we are trying to capture as much of it as possible because he is so small and I don't want this to, I don't want this time to end, but I'm also excited for him to be a bit more independent because right now, again, he's just very young and it's a lot of um, just focusing on the puppy. So if you are interested in seeing Tucker's daily life, he has an Instagram. It's called Tucks the Pug. That's right. So again, like I said at the beginning, I will leave his handle down below so you can go check out his Instagram. And you also have to remember that one like on his photos or my video is one hug one for hug. Tucker. So make sure if you want to give him a hug, you have to like, and then we will give him a hug on your behalf. Yes. And he loves hugs. So the more likes, the better for Tucker. Yep, and so I guess in summary, uh, too long didn't watch is pugs are very needy. Um, they're worth it, but they're puppies, obviously. They take a lot of work, and they're probably one of the best dogs. So if you get the opportunity, obviously, I think you should get a pug, but I'm very biased because I have one. But we love Tucker very much, and he's a great part of our family, and he's already brought us way, way more joy than I thought he would. And his little issues of potty accidents or it's all, howling. It's all normal. It's part of being a puppy parent. 
and too soon, sadly, he'll be grown up and then he won't be a puppy anymore. But for now, we just got to enjoy the moments like now when he's just being so cute and sleepy. And now it's so fun having it in the summertime in Krakow because we are able to go outside and do things. He can't be outside all day long because he is so small. But uh, just to like go outside and sit in the square or on a boat, uh, he really is starting to like that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you liked seeing our sleepy boy. Um, so sleepy. He is very tiny so I will actually be inserting pictures throughout this whole video so you can just kind of see him be playful and uh, everything like that because this is how he is for so much of the day so anyways we hope you guys enjoyed we hope you enjoyed seeing the little Tucker because he's the best and leave it uh, in the comments below what you want to see of Tucker because we have a lot of ideas and he is very excited about doing all of these things as you can tell but we are wanting to hear what you guys are wanting to see of him too so thank you so much for watching again please subscribe and like this video to see more content and we will see you guys in my next video bye, bye.